you make out of that, pal? That's a stick-up, sailor. That's what it is. Please! 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 Hold up! Please! Yeah, please! 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 What are you yelling about? What's the matter? Stick up! Where? What's the matter with you two? Hey, we just saw a hold-up. What hold-up? Where? Oh, right on the street there. Uh, that's him. Yeah, that's the guy that was held up. Hey, you. Come back here. Are you calling me? Yeah, you. Were you just held up? Held up? I? There must be some mistake, officer. That's what I thought. These two... That's him. Tell him what you just told me. Oh, me and my pal, we just saw you right on the street. There was another guy with a gun, and he was going through your pocket. Well, I do not know whether it is the fog or the crowd, but uh, I was not wrong. How do you like that? I was a saw my whole eye. Yeah, me too. You had your hands up, and the guy... I ought to run the two of you in for creating a disturbance. My card, officer. I have been conducting my business in this neighborhood for many years. Sure, you've got an eyeglass store on O'Farrell Street. Optician shop. I am an oculist. And I think uh, these men should have their eyes examined or, or perhaps their heads. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. Does this look as if I had been robbed? Wow. Officer, I tell you, I saw him. Yeah. Uh, if you don't mind, officer, I have an appointment. Sure. Go ahead, Dr. Decker. Sorry to trouble you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Doc. Good night, gentlemen. Why, he now, can't get you two before I throw the both okay. of you in the clink. Okay, officer, I'll take care of my uh, well, You saw what I, I thought. Said, let's get out of here. Yes, that is it. There wasn't anyone out front. Are you the oculist? Didn't you see the bell? No. I broke a lens. Could you replace it? Yes, I think so. Follow me, please. Ah, sit here, please. Remove your hat. When and uh, by whom were your eyes last examined? One year and three months ago. Emil Heinschloss of Chicago was the oculist. My name is Marlowe, Victor Marlowe. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, my records are not available at the moment. However, I know Dr. Heinschloss, and I'm sure I can fill his prescription. Thank you. Good vision is very necessary in my work. Yes. OD, plus one, minus 50, axis 180. Right here, Doctor. Right. Now the left side. That should be OS plus one, 25 minus one. Axis 180. Correct. Now this one. Just to make certain. I'm glad you don't take chances, Doctor. Minus 750 OD. And now here, Marlowe, now that we know each other, what is your assignment, San Francisco? I don't know yet. My instructions are in code. You'll have to decipher them. Yeah, Marlo, I'm very embarrassed. Why? Just one hour ago on my way back here to keep this appointment, a waterfront thug held me up. He robbed me of the book that I need to decode your instructions. 
You know what this means, Herr Doctor? Yeah, I'm fully aware of it. But there was absolutely nothing I could do about it. Haven't you another copy of our code? No, it was the new book that arrived two weeks ago. It might take six months to get another one from Europe. I don't know how we can explain this, Herr Doctor. I travel 3,000 miles and this happens. I realize we are all in jeopardy. I'm sure the robbery was arranged by someone who knew I carried that book with me at all times. We've got to act quickly. The man who took this book from you, had you ever seen him before? No. He was definitely a waterfront character. I'm sure I would recognize him if I ever saw him again. Was there anything else in the book besides the code dictionary? Yes, the names of every West Coast operator. Oh, evidence of that kind in the wrong hands here, Doctor. It might mean that. The firing squad for a lot of us. <laughs> we must find it. I think I have an idea where to look. Come. Better stay in a hotel tonight. Tomorrow I will send you where you can live indefinitely and be less conspicuous. Yes? There is a, a woman, Emma Hauser. She runs a boarding house not far from here. This Hauser woman, is she one of us? No, no. But her daughter is private secretary to one of our men, Max Kramer. Ship's on the right there. The girl, however, is absolutely unaware of his other activities. This Kramer, as a matter of fact, is a man who awaits there was a report that I recently received concerning Miss Hauser's relatives in Germany. You may use that report if uh, persuasion is necessary. Hey, what? Yeah, Maisie. Give me a couple of bears, will you? Coming up. Yeah. Hey, take them back. What's the matter? Well, there's no head on him. Yeah, just like the rest of your family, huh? Yeah. All Yeah, I guess you can head alone. Yes, I always work alone. Don't worry, Doctor. I'll bring the book back. Good. You read this about Nerds? It was a bad break, Kramer. And with the book almost in our hands. Almost? 
You mean he didn't turn it over to you? I, uh, I thought you knew. Mertz was on his way here to meet me when it happened. Someone must have gotten why. Because, uh, well, that accident, it really wasn't an accident. You're lying. I paid you to get that book. I've got that. Zimmerman, if you double cross me... You're out of your mind. What would I want with that book? I tell you, it was one of Decker's men that is responsible for the drowning. They must have waylaid Mel. Got the book and threw him off the pier. No. How did they know it was Mertz? Oh, is Decker as well as you do? You ask a question like that. I counted on you, Zimmerman. You can't realize what that code book means to me, to my family, innocent people in Germany. Maybe things aren't really as bad as they seem. Oh, <laughs> no, not for you. You haven't got a family over there for the Gestapo to persecute. It isn't too late. There is still a chance to get that book. How? Becker undoubtedly has it again. But he's more careful now he wouldn't carry it with him. I know a safe blower coming around here, a man I can do business with. Oh, all right, send for this man. He's very expensive, cash in advance. Never mind the cost. Will you pay $2,000? Yes, if necessary. I'll get in touch with him right away. Oh. And don't let Decker outsmart you this time. Don't worry, I won't. Frederick, kind of late, ain't you? Oh, I worked quite late again last night. Mr. Kramer's rushed with heaps of new policies. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, darling. I've got some nice potato pancakes and sausages just for my baby. Never give up trying, do you, Mother? I'll take the usual black coffee and orange juice. Black coffee and orange juice? That sounds like a girl trying to get a husband. A job modeling. It's not modeling, Maisie. I'm the domestic type. You don't have to lose weight for me, Frida. And who asked you, my little canvas kisser? Oh, I don't know. I think Butch would make a good pin-up boy for somebody. Do you see? A pin-up boy? Yeah. <laughs> He'd look better in the rogues' gallery. Good morning, Mrs. Hauser. Hello, honey. Hello, darling. Hi, Butch. Hi, Maisie. Had your breakfast? Oh, hours ago. Touch me. I've been in conference with the president of the Bay Shipping Company since 8.30. Really? Well, tell me what happened. <laughs> Come on, pin-up. Two's a company. Four's a quartet. And you ain't no Sinatra. We'll be seeing you, I hope. Yeah, so long, Jerry. Be seeing you, Frida. What do you, what do you want me to do, burst with excitement? Tell me, what happened? Well, honey, if I get the contract out with their new freighter, it will be goodbye waterfront, hello, Knob Hill. Really? You mean it that good? Well, it's better. Mr. Bronson himself told me that if I do a real job on the first freighter, I'll get a contract to do six more. Jerry, I'm so happy for you. For both of us. Oh, heavens. I promised Mr. Crane I'd be in at 10 and I'm a half hour late already. Oh, my car's right out front. I'll get you there in a jiffy. Come on, I thought you were in a hurry. Oh, I'm sorry, Jerry. Yes. Your place has been recommended to me. I'm looking for a room. I'm sorry, but you see the sign out front. I have no vacancy. Maybe you could try... I don't think you understand. I have news concerning your family in Germany. It is good news, I hope. Come in, please. How's my mother? And Hans? Did you see him? Your mother is in Leipzig. Kenningstrasse 28, if my memory is correct. 
Oh, Candy, it's right. Did yes. I understand you to say you had no room for me here? I'm all filled up, but me will try... It seems very comfortable here. And I'm going to be in San Francisco for some time. I would be so glad to talk with you for hours about my people over there. And if I had a room, I would, I would be so happy to let you have it. I'm sure you'll find room for me here. Your mother, Lena Schmidt, is not strong enough to live in a concentration camp. Concentration camp? Who are you? What do you want? You needn't worry about your mother going to a concentration camp so long as you cooperate with the right. Nothing has happened to my people over there. If you make room for me here, nothing will. But if you won't cooperate... I have no room, I tell you. But I give you my own room and sleep in my daughter's. That is better. Good morning, Mr. Kramer. Oh, good morning. Sorry I'm late. Oh, that's all right. Maybe I shouldn't have kept you so late last night writing policies. Thank you, Jerry. Oh, we're feeling in if I need a doctor. Uh, You're looking well yourself. Thank you. He's an important ship's chandler now. Yes, I heard some talk along the waterfront that you got the day shipping company's contract. My congratulations, Jerry. Well, I haven't signed the contract as yet, but it's as good as in the bag. I suppose I better start looking for a new secretary now? That's right. Not so fast. Wait till you deliver the goods and get paid. And just like a woman, always being practical. You're very fortunate, Jerry, finding somebody so practical like Frida. I'm afraid he doesn't appreciate me. Yes. Well, I think he does. Uh, by the way, Jerry, if you need any help in closing your deal, let me know. I've done a lot of business with the bay shipping people. Thanks. I'll remember that. I'll see you at the house tonight, honey. So long. Hiya, Jerry. Oh, great, Mike. Want a lift? No, thanks. I'm still on duty. What's new with the homicide squad? Uh, still seems to be plenty of excitement. <laughs> Say, when are you and Frida getting married? Well, we've decided to take the plunge, but when? I guess that's up to Frida. If I put over the deal I'm working on now, Mike, you can expect to be best man some Sunday afternoon that's not too far off. Good luck. Thanks, Mike. I'll be seeing you at the club. Right. Come to the Anke Cafe at 9 o'clock tomorrow night. Show this to no one and come alone. Take a table near the phone booth. The writer will greet you. Oh. This I do not like. Yeah. Somebody probably paid the writer of that note to hire Mertz. Now the middleman is trying to cut this man's throat. And mine, too. You suspect somebody? Could be any one of three. Schmidt, Vogel, or Kramer. Why weren't they eliminated? Because that is not always the best plan. Now about the book. I have already sent for them. Kramer should be here momentarily. You're wasting a lot of valuable time. Really? What kind of strategy would you suggest? I'll tell you more about that in the morning. In the meantime, you better not do anything about that note till you hear from me. Peter's in here, Doctor. Why do you make me come here? I told you it wasn't safe for both of us. I'm not interested in that. What I want to know is what you're up to. What do you mean, up to? I will get to the point quickly. A couple of nights ago, I was held up and robbed. But not for my money. What did they want? A certain book which only a few persons knew I carried. You are one of the few. Yes, but I... Did they get it? Yeah. Yeah. But the man who took it is now dead. The book is still missing. But why do you tell me all this? Because it is very vital to you that the book be found and returned. To me? It is your life as well as mine, Herr Kramer. But I haven't seen the book, Doctor. So help me, I...
I got your message. What's wrong now? That hasn't got it. How'd you find out? He sent for me. Actually accused me. Thought I had it. What's going on, gentlemen? Isn't it clear to you yet, Kramer, that Decker has it? Then where did he send for me? To find out whether you knew anything about it. Especially if you had any reason for wanting the book. That was a smart... What happened? Somebody must have broken in here last night. Oh. Well, I'd better phone the police. No, no. I mean, for necessary. Uh, there's no real damage done. Nothing of what is missing. Uh, perhaps we won't be bothered by them again. Well, whatever you say, only. Well, I'd better get this place cleaned up. You have some early appointments this morning. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Dr. Decker speaking. Hold away a moment, please. I do not believe you will have further trouble if you do bring them back. There's no charge. Thank you very much. Go ahead. I paid a visit to our friends last night while you were talking with them, but found nothing. I didn't think you would. I will keep the appointment myself tonight at the Anchor Cafe. I want results. If you don't get them, you know where to find me. I don't anticipate any trouble. the man you're going to do business with. Very well, let us get down to business then. Follow me, please. Be seated, please. Never mind that, you know why I'm here. Yes, there are one or two details which we must consider. Now, Jurek, what is the price? I don't happen to have your book, but I know where it is. If I return it, the price for its return is $5,000 in cash. Ridiculous. Maybe, but the price is still $5,000. Very well, I will write a check. This is strictly cash and carry, Herr Doctor. Very well. Bring the book to my store at noon tomorrow. The money will be there. <laughs> that might provide a nice trap for me to fall into. No thanks, sir, Doctor. I'll make the appointment. You come here tomorrow night with the cash, and I'll deliver the book. How do I know this is not one of your tricks? That's just it. You don't. But what can you do about it? <laughs> Unless you suggest that I find another buyer for your book. You can expect me tomorrow about this time. With the cash and a loan. Of course. I'm sorry to disturb you, Mr. Kramer, but... Oh, that's all right, Jerry. Frida's out to lunch, but come on in, please. Well, I wasn't looking for Frida. That is, I stopped in to have a talk with you. Mm -hmm. What's on your mind? It's about that Bay Shipping Company deal. You told me I could come to you if I needed help. Yeah, that's right. 
I have very little capital, so I plan to finance the deal by using their contract to make a loan at the bank. I thought that should be ample collateral. Did the bank turn you down? I didn't get that far. Bay Shipping won't issue the contract until I first post a cash bond guaranteeing completion of the job. That's right. All the big contractors operate that way. Well, I'm not a big contractor. Where would I get that kind of money? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> you might try a certain insurance underwriter, particularly if he happens to be your friend. You, you mean you? Oh, gosh, Mr. Kramer, you don't know what this means. Maybe I do. You meet me here Thursday night, and we'll draw up the contract. I couldn't begin to thank you, Mr. Kramer. That's all right, Jerry. You run along now and be here Thursday, huh? <laughs> Thanks. Goodbye. Mr. Milo, what, what are you doing here? Nothing, just looking for something. We'll find nothing here or anywhere else in this house. You never can tell for a house, eh? Mr. Milo, please go. This is my daughter's room. Ah, that's what I'm looking for. A match. Mr. Milo, as long as you stay in this house, I must ask you to remain in your own room. I will do exactly as I please, Mr. Bauhauser. Do you understand? Jerry's picking me up in a few minutes, will you? Oh, excuse me. Is there something wrong? Oh, no, no. I was just showing Mr. Marlowe your room. Yes, quite nice, Miss Hauser, but not as nice as a lovely girl like you deserves. She's engaged to be married, Mr. Marlowe. Yes, so I understand. I've been learning a lot of interesting things about you, Miss Hauser. I showed Mr. Marlowe your picture. I must go now. Good night, Mrs. Hauser. Good night, Miss Frida. What goes on here, Mother? I don't know what you mean. Why did you show that man our photographs? I... Well, he seems to know all about our family in Germany. Mother, I realize your friend, Mr. Marlowe, is interesting. But I don't like him. Frida, I know what you mean. But don't worry, darling. Dr. Decker's book. I don't know you. I said I'll do business only with Dr. Decker. Where is he? You can give me the book. Take your hands off that money. Where's the book? Nurse. 
fellow who used to hang around here. He was drunk. Who hired meth? Nobody. He, he found it. You're lying. The book was stolen from Dr. Decker. You know it. I didn't steal it. I, I swear I didn't. What did Merce want with it? I don't know. He said somebody would ask for it. But I tried to return it to Dr. Decker. For five thousand dollars. I don't want the money or the book. Take them both. I will when I get around to it. Who did Merce want to give it to? I don't know. He he said somebody would call for it. Who? Max. Max. Kramer? Yes. Max Kramer. Now we're getting somewhere. What did Kramer want with it? I don't know. He never told me. Did he want to give it to the authority? Yes. That's it. He did. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. I think I have the puzzle pretty well pieced together now. Thanks to Zimmerman's great. In that case, it might be well for us to pay Herr Kramer a little visit. Yeah, I was getting around to that. You are not to see him, though, until I give you the word. Meanwhile, stay quiet. Keep your eyes open. Yeah. Now I can decipher your instructions. I have the papers right here. Getting that book back has saved us a lot of embarrassment here, Doctor. Yeah. I am indeed grateful for your efficiency. Oh, you probably know, Herr Marlow, it is the rule for me to decode messages alone. Well, if you insist, Herr Doctor, I'll just walk down to the corner cafe and get a little something for my nerves. I know you are anxious to ascertain your assignment here. I will have this ready in a few minutes. Oh, uh, by the way, there's no need in my carrying this money around. Are you... you didn't... I have only one way of doing business with extortionists. You are an idiot, Marlow. Some very Gestapo will learn that you are not an asset to the work we are doing. I've saved you $5,000. And remember, dead men don't talk. Of course they don't, but clues do. Only a fool underestimates the American police. Calm yourself and decipher my instructions. Remember, I give orders on the West Coast. I won't cooperate with you on this assignment, whatever it is. I was sent to your hair doctor to do a certain job. And I intend to do it with or without your cooperation. And when the newspaper headlines start playing up Zimmerman's murder, the best thing we can do is to remain as inactive as possible. What you need is a drink. I'll bring something back for you. What I need are men whose brains are not in the muzzle of an automatic. What do you make of it, Mike? Well, if we can believe what we see, the modest robbery. The bartender and the girl say that Zimmerman used to keep a lot of cash in the safe. Well, there's none there now. Whoever pulled this job left nothing for us to go on. Wait a minute. I got an idea. Supposing one of us pulled this job and went undercover. What's the first thing you'd want to know? Who the cops have a line on. Exactly. And you'd either get a tip off on the grapevine or read about it in the newspaper. But let's say you didn't get that tip off. There was none to give. Nobody knew that the guy you bumped off was even dead. Then what? For me, I'd probably go crazy wondering what happened. Of course you would. And you'd come right back here hoping to get some lowdown on it. It listens great, except for one thing. How do we keep the murder out of the news? Hey, if you're worried about us, we got awful short memories. Yeah. I ain't seen nothing, and I know from less. You said it. You're a bright girl, Maisie. Now, let's see you two walk out of here as if nothing had ever happened. And stay that way a couple of days. Yeah, sure. Go on. Yes. Yeah, Pacific. Extra, extra. Good morning, Star Boy. Yes, sir. 
came. Excellent. Police excellent. paper? Yes. Okay. I want two men assigned to the Anchor Cafe on the 24-hour shift. But Mike, 24-hour shifts are pretty rough. It's only open 12 hours a day. I think the killer will show up there. Now stay on the job. I want to report on everyone that comes to see Zimmerman and all telephone calls traced. Is that clear? You're the... Anchor Cafe. I want to speak with Mr. Zimmerman, please. Why, uh, Mr. Zimmerman is out at the bar. I'll send someone to call him. Just hold the wire on it, please. This is it. Get out to that bar and have that call traced. Are you through, mister? Operator, this is official 58. I want an incoming call traced on Gary 97571. Some other German made revolver. German, huh? Mm -hmm. Mike, you've got to do something about those newspaper men out there. They got a tip off of a shooting at the Anchor Cafe and they're hot on the trail. I've used up all my alibis trying to stir them away. Are there any more calls over the Zimmerman wire? No. Okay, it's my party. I'll talk to the reporters.
This is Mrs. Hauser, yes. Oh, good morning. Just a minute, I call her. Mila, you are wanted on the phone. Yes, mother. It was a frame, my honey dear. Good morning, Mr. Kramer. Well, all right. Well, I'll go to the bank first. Yes, I have the keys with me. Yes, I understand. You want the two sealed envelopes on top. I'm to put them in the office safe for you, and you'll pick them up tonight. No, I won't mention it to anyone. Don't worry, I'll take care of everything. Have a nice trip. Goodbye. You mean Kramer just decided to pack up and leave town? How long does he expect to be gone? He didn't say. He can't do that. If I don't post my bond by tomorrow morning, I'll lose the contract. I knew I should have remembered to ask him something, but... Well, he spoke in such a peculiar manner that... Well, it just didn't occur to me. Of course. It wouldn't occur to you. It's too trivial. I promised Mother I'd be home early. Oh, I'll get you home in time. But first, you've got to listen to me, Frida. I know I'm not the most important thing in Kramer's personal affairs. Only his leaving town this way without a word. Isn't there someone else you could go to? It's too late to start from scratch. Oh, don't worry, darling. There'll be other chances, bigger contracts. But this guaranteed our future. I can wait, Jerry, if you can. I'm not complaining. Maybe you are, but I am. Come on, I'll take you home. Aren't you coming in? Mother expects you for dinner. I'm sorry, Frida, but after what's happened, I'm a little upset. Have you any idea where I could locate Kramer before he leaves town? Well, he's going to be in the office tonight. He's going to pick up something I left for him in the safe. Say, maybe it still isn't too late. I'll see you later, Frida. for you.
in that building. I was in Mr. Kramer's office, officer. I was... That's room 210, isn't it? It's on the second floor. Yes, I think it is. I was trying to get help. Oh, you got him. Can you identify this man? Yes, I saw him run to Mr. Kramer's office when I was phoning headquarters. Oh, but I can explain, Officer Wright. Yes, yes, I know. You'll have plenty of time to explain. Jim, you go up with this woman and check up on that shooting. I'll hang on to this guy. Sorry to bother you at this hour. Well, that's all right. Come in, please. I'd like a few words with Frida. Frida? Is there anything wrong? What's the matter, Mike? I'm afraid I got some bad news for you. Mr. Kramer was found dead in his office just a little while ago. Dead? Oh, what happened? I'm... Well, that's not all. We've made an arrest and... Oh, for the first time in my life, I hope we haven't got the right man. What are you trying to say, Mike? Did you know that Mr. Kramer kept an unusually large sum of money in his office safe? Money? Well, I, I put some envelopes there this morning in his direction. Why? Did you tell anyone about it being there? No, of course not. He asked me not to mention it to anyone. Did Jerry Donovan know about the money? Jerry? I don't think so. I, I might have told him, but I don't remember. I'm afraid we'll need you for further questioning, Frida. Be in my office tomorrow morning. What difference does it make if, if Jerry knows or doesn't? Because we're holding him for murder. What are you trying to do, Jerry? Keep me here all night? Why can't you be on the level with me? Can't you understand I'm trying to help you? May I have a cigarette, please? Okay, I'll give you a rest. Thanks, Mike. All right. Let's stop kidding each other. What'd you do with a gun? I never had a gun at any time in my life. Admitting you killed Kramer doesn't mean the gas chamber. But, Jerry, there may be extenuating circumstances whereby you can beat the case. But when you tell me that you just dropped into Kramer's office, that's rubbing it in. Don't you realize that you were actually in that office when the cleaning woman was calling the police and that she's positively identified you? Mike, that's probably all true. All I can say is that this woman is making an honest mistake when she places me in Kramer's office at the time he was killed. So you're going to stick to that story? I have to, because any other version of it would be untrue. All right. But no jury is ever going to believe it. Maybe not. But that's a chance I'll have to take. Take him back to his cell. Think over what I said, and I'll see you in the morning. Thanks, Mike. But that's the way it adds up. Here's something interesting, Mike. The bullet that killed Kramer and the bullet that killed Zimmerman are identical. Here, take a look. Do you think they were fired from the same gun? Exactly. A Mauser with a slight defect in the bore. See those markings? They prove it conclusively. Well, they are identical. That further complicates matters. Yes? Miss Frieda Hauser is the UG. Send her in. File those and notify the district attorney. All right. Good morning, Mike. Hello, Frieda. Mike, can I see Jerry? I'm sorry, Frieda, but Jerry's being held in communicado until he appears before the grand jury. How well did Jerry know Zimmerman? You mean the man who was killed recently? Yes. Well, I don't know that Jerry and Zimmerman were acquainted. 
Why? Rita, the man who killed Kramer also killed Zimmerman. We're holding Jerry for both murders. Did Jerry admit knowing Zimmerman? I haven't had a chance to talk with him yet. This new evidence only came up a few minutes ago. Mike, this is a terrible mistake, I tell you. In my work, I can't afford to be sympathetic. The evidence against Jerry is very definite, and I must act accordingly. He confessed if he were guilty. I know he would. I believe everything he told you. It isn't enough to believe in his innocence. We must have facts to prove it. And so far, they're very much against Jerry. You know he wouldn't kill anyone. I know. There's one thing I'd like to be sure of. Have you ever seen anything like this before? No, never. Why? Does Jerry like to draw? Does he make sketches when he's nervous? Well, I've never seen him sketch anything. That sketch is vitally important, and it may solve these murders. Well, you've got to, Mike. You've got to. I know how you feel, Frida. Why don't you go and see the district attorney? Maybe he'll give you permission to see Jerry. Thanks. I will. Drop this, sir. Thank you. Serious. I was returning from dinner last night and I saw them through the window. They broke in and searched the shop. Hmm. Kramer, no doubt. Yeah. Kramer, no doubt. Well, he won't bother you anymore. What? She paid him a visit, too. I told you before that I, not you, who represents the Gestapo in this territory. Hmm. With 19 of your agents in federal custody, I can't say much for your leadership, Herr Doctor. Had you listened to me and kept your gun in your pocket, this never would have happened. However, that's beside the point. I need help. Now, money and transportation. At least $2,000 would be necessary. Had you cooperated with me in my assignment, you would not now be cringing in this shack. We both have money and there'd be no suspicion. You know perfectly well you could not complete your assignment. It was entirely too dangerous or too risky. That was because of your carelessness. I refuse to argue the point. The fact remains, I must get out of San Francisco. And you are going to help me. Already, the FBI has yes, started. Yes, I know. It's these are funds. I'm afraid you misunderstand my intentions, Herr Doctor. Yeah. I am beginning to understand. You propose to assume my leadership. Is that the idea? Exactly. You've reached the end of your rope. 
Yeah. The mama? You are a shrine. A shrine! <laughs> They wouldn't let me see Jerry. Oh, hello, Mr. Marlowe. Hello, Miss Hauser. Don't worry, darling. Everything will work out all right. I didn't want to ask you while he was here. Did Gorman find anything? Mr. Gorman thinks Jerry is guilty. Oh, there's only something I could do to help. I'll get you some hot soup, honey. That will make you feel better. Mother! Mother! Yes? I found it. I found it. He, he's in this house. Priya, who? What? It's Mr. Marlowe. I don't understand. I'm calling the police. There's no need. Up those stairs, please, to your room. yourself comfortable, ladies, and silent. If you're so foolish as to make any outcries before I go, you will never leave this room alive. It's all my fault, darling. I let this man scare me when he came here for the room. I should have gone to the police then. You knew he was a murderer. Oh, no, darling. But when he used those Gestapo methods, he threatened my family in Germany. I should have known that such a man could be guilty of anything. Yes. Something we all learn sooner or later. But in our case, we may have waited too long. What a punch. Where's Peter and her mother? Oh, gosh, I forgot about them. All right, Butch. What's the matter with a little help? You know what's the matter. What do you want me to do, break it again? On who? You still got a good left, ain't you? Come on, get your nose out of that newspaper and carry something else. Oh, always making me work.
Don't you know by now that drawing things like that can get you into trouble? Getting into this kind of trouble? I wouldn't mind. Not bad at all. Back to the inspiration. <laughs> 